The game of paddle is changing super fast. We went in a couple of decades from a bouncy game played with wooden paddles on concrete walls and concrete floors to today's game of constant smashes on curled grass flooring with glass walls. And in order to keep up with these changing court conditions, I think it's really important to prioritize health. And by health, I mean paddle shoes. So today I'm gonna to share my experiences with three of the most popular paddle shoes so I can help you decide if they work for you or if there's something you should stay away from. Let's get into it, vamos. All right, so we're gonna organize our discussion into shoe by shoe. And with each shoe, we're gonna talk about its price, we're gonna talk about its breathability and agility, the, the weight of the shoe. We're gonna talk about how much support it provides and then we're gonna talk about the cushioning. In terms of my bias, I'm a pretty lightweight player. You'll see me, I'm a bit skinny, so I might have different opinions than someone like Manu Martin. You know, both are valid, but I think just know when to apply which, right? So I might require less cushioning than, than some heavier players. All models that I've tried are size 42 and a half. I'll put the EU and the US sizes below. And I have a medium width foot, I believe. Not too wide, not too narrow. One thing I will talk a little bit about is how to choose paddle shoes for different types of environment, how important traction is to you. If you're interested in my going into that a little bit more, comment below how to choose, and I'll do a full video on how to choose paddle shoes. All right, with that, let's get into it. So the shoes we're gonna go over are the Asics Gel Paddle Pros, the Asics Gel Resolution 8s, and the Babolat Jet Primera 2s this is a second generation shoe. I wanna start with the Asics Gel Paddle Pros because these are kind of the most common shoes. They're the budget shoe. You'll see them around 50 euros, the workhouse of the paddle player. I see them all around the club. And I think there's a good reason for that. It has a pretty wide toe box. They're quite comfortable. I mean, not the most cushioned shoes. You can feel the little bit of cheapness in the foam. But when other shoes start at double this price, it's not like you're getting four pairs of shoes when you buy the other shoes. So I think it's a really great budget option. I like the wide toe box. They're pretty breathable. They feel relatively durable. And these always come with the traditional herringbone traction. Here we'll go into traction a little bit. So herringbone is this kind of pattern of, of chevrons up and down. This comes from clay courts on tennis and these are the first shoes that were used in paddle. And you can use these in paddle, especially on sandy courts. If you use them on new style courts, courts with less sand, with the curly grass, then you might have issues with feeling stuck on the ground a little bit, too much traction. So if you go on my website, you'll be able to check all of the different traction levels for the shoes and filter by that. But suffice to say, if you're playing on sandy courts or wet courts, slippery courts, or you have issues with slipping, then you should go for herringbone. This is a classic, the highest traction you can get basically. If you play on Mondo style courts, then you might have some knee pain as a result of like sticking too much when you're playing with shoes like this. In terms of pros, I think these are a really great budget option. Honestly, they're a great option even if you're not budget because you just like don't waste money if you don't know if you're gonna play paddle three times a week all the time, right? Um, I like the wide toe box. I think they're pretty comfortable and provide pretty good support. They are a bit rigid though. So if you're looking for something that's, that's really like cushiony and plush and feels like a pillow, this is not the shoe that's gonna do that. And that's about it for our first shoe. I just wanna do a quick interruption to say that I have just between editing and releasing this video launched a partnership with Total Paddle. And relevant to you guys, you can get 10% off with Paddle FY10 on these shoes and other shoes and rackets and everything. Check it out guys, great shop. So next up are the Asics Gel Resolution 8s. By the way, the gel line has a little piece of gel in the midsole of the shoe. So this is one of Asics' ideas, one of their kind of techniques at reducing vibrations and pro providing additional cushioning. I don't know if it provides too much help. If you're interested in more kind of analysis like that, I would recommend checking out Foot Doctor Zach's video. I'll put a link uh, in the description. Really good kind of data in there more for tennis and hardcore tennis specifically, but you might learn something in that video. So in terms of price, we're moving up a little bit here at about 80 euros. The price actually varies a lot. I've picked up these sometimes for around 115 euros, sometimes as low as 70 euros. 
So take a look at what the prices are at the moment. I actually purchased these shoes because there are a lot of ankle issues in my family. A lot of people have sprained their ankle, rolled their ankle a ton of times. Fortunately, so far, I've not had that issue yet. But if that's something that you're worried about, these shoes provide incredible support and they're super cushioned. They have this exterior hard <clears throat> surface on the outside that would prevent you if you're making movements stopping and then it would prevent you from rolling. Like you really need to go hard because your foot's kind of below or at the top of that wall. So if you're looking for something that provides ankle support, I really recommend these. These are great at cushioning. Asics breaks down its racket sports shoes into those that are better for control and those that are better for speed. So control is more cushioning and support. And this is kind of the master of the control game. The Solution Swift is the top of the line for maximum speed players. I will say that they're a bit narrow on the bunion of the foot. I sometimes felt a little too compressed, a little bit more compressed than I would want to right around there. But I will also say that they're extremely durable. I've played with these a lot. You can see some of the aging in the midsole, but in general, I think they wear quite well. One area where I think they could be more enforced is they have this unique webbing on the top of the foot, which makes it quite durable, but it does two things. So, it really wraps your foot in and it connects uh, from the sole up to the laces. So you get a really tight kind of uni feel. It's not separated anywhere, so there's no points for failure, but it's a bit sweaty and it has a tendency to rip open where the laces exit. I've had yeah, a couple pairs of these shoes and they tend to rip open there, which may be fine after a year and I tie my shoes really quite tightly. It's, it's not a, a major problem, I would say but I think if they supplied us with slightly larger laces, it would maybe prevent that from happening so often. So to summarize, the pros of these shoes, they are great for support and they're extremely comfortable and they're very, very durable. Again, after a year, they're looking really great. In terms of the cons, they're very heavy. They weigh 20% more than the gel paddle pros that cost half of them. They also don't vent very well. My feet tend to sweat a lot, but these ones really were bad. Uh, I had to wash my shoes all the time and it got to a point where I just wound up having to replace the shoes because washing wasn't really helping enough. So I'd recommend someone who has sweaty feet to stay away from these. These come in both a herringbone sole as well as a paddle sole. Because of the problems with breathability that I had with the Asics, I wanted my next pair of shoes to be as breathable as possible. And that's why I went with the Babolat Jet Primera 2s. Note that this is a kind of non-standard color. This is the APT version. I think it looks really nice, this version though. So these are extremely breathable. They are very lightweight and they are also quite comfortable. I would expect a shoe that's really lightweight to seem very not durable or to seem, you know, not very comfortable. In fact, I find these both somehow breathable, durable, and comfortable. They're definitely more comfortable than the Gel Paddle Pros and slightly less comfortable than the Gel Resolutions, but they weigh 20% less, right? So I don't think that's really comparing apples to apples. Your feet really sink into them. I don't know if that's because the midsole is very springy or because of this paddle specific diagonal up the foot lacing that they have marketed. Or maybe it's because of this padded upper that your, your heel kind of sinks into. I'm not sure what it is, but my foot really does tend to sink into them in a way that I feel very reassured and really comfortable in. The sole is a modified herringbone. I think it's a very cool looking sole and it has these two ridges for additional flexibility. I think they're, they're quite a flexible shoe but not too, too flexible. I was hoping that the modified herringbone would be good for Mondo Quartz. I read a bunch of reviews before ordering these, but in fact, I would say that they're too high traction for me for Mondo Quartz. I would look for something that has a little bit less traction if I was playing like I do almost always on Mondo Quartz. And I really did like wearing them a lot until it became match time. And at that point, 
I found with these laces, I'm not able to get them tight enough so that my foot really gets into the shoe and doesn't move around when I'm playing. I will say that I do have quite jerky movements on the court. I like to get low and move back and forth. But I've never had as many issues with other shoes in terms of my foot banging up against the front of the shoe, which then causes my toes to turn purple and I've, I actually have lost a couple of toenails because of these shoes. Part of that could be due to the shape of the shoe. Whereas with the gel resolution, it has pretty dramatic tilt towards the interior of the foot. I find with the Babolat, it's slightly less, which winds up with my big toe bumping up the side a little bit more than with the gel resolutions. I'm just not able to get the shoelaces tight enough. And even with that, some of the shoelace connectors are actually already fraying after a couple of months of light use. So that's one place where I think the durability could be improved. By the way, I've checked all the reviews and I've spoken to several people I know who play with these shoes and none of them have these issues, but I do want to just share this in case it could help some others making better decisions. So in summary, these shoes are very lightweight, super, super breathable, very comfortable. However, they are a little bit too high traction for me and they don't suit the shape of my foot as well as other shoes. So in summary, if you're looking for a good deal, I recommend going for the Gel Paddle Pros. If you're looking for something for cushion and for support, I recommend going for the Gel Resolutions. Note that they're a little bit tighter than some of the other shoes. And if you're looking for something lightweight and breathable, I recommend going for the Babolat Jet Primeros. So my next step, there's, I would say, four top shoes that I haven't yet included in my test that I'd like to do in the next video. So that's the ASIC Solution Swift, the Head Motion Pro, the Knox AT10s, and the Bull Paddles. The Vertex and the Hats are basically the same with slight styling differences. I think the Speed ones are probably the Solution Swifts. I think those looking for comfort and cushioning should go look at the AT10s. And if someone is looking for a little bit of versatility that suits Mondo cords more than the others, then I would recommend taking out the bull paddles and the heads. Well, that's what I'm gonna be checking out first, actually. What do you think? Any shoes that we're missing? Any different opinions about the shoes? I'd really love to hear your opinions. I think this is a great channel for us to learn about the different shapes of feet and maybe how different feet suit different types of paddle shoes. So now I pass the mic to you. Are you experiencing similar issues that I've mentioned before or are you seeing something totally different in your experiences with these shoes? Maybe my foot's anatomy is, is very unusual. I'd really love to hear your opinions. Please drop them in the comments or shoot me an email so I can share it with the rest of the community. Thanks so much for following along. I hope this video was fun. If you stayed till now, considering giving us a like and subscribe, there are very few subscribed viewers of this channel. I think like less than 25%. So I really appreciate all the support. I'm putting a lot of effort into these, so I hope they're getting better. I'm trying to learn some things. So if you have any opinions, things that I should do better, I'd love to hear them. Thanks so much, guys. Take care.